Good evening, everybody. We're back. This is Daryl. I hope you're all hearing me and seeing everything fine. Uh, I've been experiencing some some uh, internet issues this afternoon, so I'm a little bit worried about tonight's broadcast. I'm going to be a little ginger about it. But uh, uh, this is a special week, and I wanted to, to really focus in on that. Um, this is week two of the regular course, so I want to give you everything you need to know about getting through this week's class. But it's also Hall of Fame week at Full Sail. And I want to I wanna go into that, and I'm going to go into that first. And um, if we actually have some problems or it's hard to get through everything, uh, I want I want to uh, talk about Hall of Fame first and get that recording done. And if I don't make it all the way through, I will actually link a previous month's lecture with all of the reading, because I'm not going to go into the reading this week. I will go through the assignments, the um, the uh, discussion assignment especially needs to be explained to you guys. So I'm going to explain it to you as well as I can, and I'll go through the uh, the main assignment as well. So I will try to cover all of those things today, and we'll record that, and then uh, we'll post uh, what, we, what we do today that has Hall of Fame in it, and we'll post a previous month's so you'll have the uh, the lecture, the uh, reading material covered as well. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? Can everyone hear me? Uh, we're following. Okay, I'm just being a little worried or paranoid. I'm sorry. But, uh, um, it, it helps to be paranoid. It it keeps you from uh, having everything go awry. So you may not know what Hall of Fame is. But it's kind of like home. Uh, it's kind of like homecoming at Full Sail. We don't have a football team. We don't have uh, you know uh, bonfires and proms or anything like that. But we celebrate the people who graduate from Full Sail and go out and do well. And Hall of Fame is our way of doing that. So for several years now, we've been inducting graduates of Full Sail into a Hall of Fame. People who've gone out and done really well in the world. So every year we induct another six folk into the Hall of Fame and we celebrate them this week. And not only the new inductees, but all of the old folks who've been previously in the Hall of Fame, they, they really uh, contribute greatly to Full Sail. They come back and give of themselves. And it's an entire week of celebration. And what we have are parties and, and, and Internet events and special special fun going on and, you know, uh, it's probably just frustrating for you guys who are online to watch people be in some place having fun. But we do make an, a huge effort to connect the really valuable stuff to all the online students, and I want to make uh, time to go through that. So uh, the the six Hall of Fame inductees that we're inducting this week, we have uh, um, a creative artist, we have a, a, a recording engineer. We have a project manager from Blizzard Entertainment. Aaron Eberhardt is a project manager for Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, Chris Kelly is a, a graphic uh, interface designer for Google. Mark Kilborn is a sound designer. He's worked on Tony Hawk projects. Uh, Sean McCabe is head of technology at Insomniac Games. So these are folks that uh, we felt have done really well. And their previous uh, inductees into the Hall of Fame are really amazing people. They've won Oscars, they've won Grammys, they've won all kinds of awards, and they've done all kinds of cool stuff. And they come back to campus and they host special events. They tell us what's going on. Um, before Guardians of the Galaxy came on, uh, w was released uh, publicly, one of the head animators who, who actually was in charge of animating uh, uh, the raccoon fellow uh, came in and sh showed us preview footage of Guardians of the Galaxy before it was ever released. So those kinds of things are very fun and you can participate in those things. Uh, the main way that they wanna connect everybody, if you if you can get into um, um, Full Sail Connect or Full Sail One, uh, they will have an opportunity for you to download the event app. Uh, I think it's it might be iPhone only. There may be an Android version, I, I can't tell. But uh, everything that I see points you to the uh, um, I iOS um, download app. So you download uh, something called Event App, put in some uh, 
passwords for the week, and you have all of the content that's available for Hall of Fame available to you on your phone or your iPad. So Hall of Fame 11 uh, includes uh, classes and seminars and live events. A lot of the live events are going to be streamed live. So it, it's incumbent upon you to kind of go and check that schedule to see what you're interested in. If you're a cinematographer, you're going to see, see, see uh, filmmakers talking about stuff. They may be talking about films coming up that haven't been released yet. If you're a, and a recording engineer, you're going, to, you're going to hear people talk about, you know, popular records that maybe won Grammys this year that they were participating in. If you're a game person, you're going to see lots of stuff about uh, either um, popular games out now or games being released soon. And I know that uh, the folks from Epic up in North Carolina, about half of those producers are from Full Sail graduates. So there's going to be a huge Fortnite thing going on on campus. So if you're interested in video games, there's going to be plenty of material about that. And the way to find out about it is to download the app and uh, check it out. And um, when you download the app uh, and want to access the Hall of Fame contents, it requires a password. The password is Cosmos, C-O-S-M-O-S, -O -S, all lowercase. You put the password in and, and it'll connect you with all of the activities. And that's the way that you can kind of participate. Uh, it will connect you to the live events. There'll be the things that'll be live streamed uh, and so forth. So there are sessions and, and, and events. Uh, there was a lot of, um, there was a dance party going on today. Uh, there was also a career uh, guidance show. I don't know how all that went because you know we're all everybody's freaking out about the uh, coronavirus today. So I don't know if every people wanted to be in inside shaking hands with um, um, uh, industry reps, but um, uh, there there's going to be a huge concert on Thursday night in which the induction happens. So that's going to be streamed live as well. You'll be able to watch that on Full Sail Live or on uh, YouTube Live, uh, and then there are a lot of gaming events from the fortress. Uh, so if you're interested in gaming, if you're interested in uh, media and, 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 and all of these things, uh, yeah, another th huge thing is the cosplay contest. And I think that you're gonna be able to participate by um, uh, submitting photos of yourself. So those of you that wanna participate in the cosplay contest, it's gonna be huge. Uh, you can actually participate remotely, I think. I I'm not 100% certain about this but uh i believe there is going to be a uh, you know an entire category for the online uh and and all you need to do is uh dress up if you probably already dressed up in your favorite cosplay you probably have those photos you'll be able to submit those and and, and participate and prizes galore etc uh the networking event was today uh, was, uh going on this afternoon uh, i haven't heard how it went i wasn't there uh but uh things happening all week uh, they started yesterday, and they culminate Thursday night. So from today through Thursday, there are going to be events almost around the clock. And if you're interested, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, I, I think that you all will find at least a, a, a seminar or an event on a subject near and dear to your heart that you will find really interesting. And, uh, you know, when, when they have the live seminars, it's not boring stuff. It's like previews of movies that haven't been released yet and things like that. So uh, very, very inside information type stuff. And uh, it's it's a full sales chance to celebrate it themselves and to celebrate you guys because, you know, all full sale is is people who've gone to school and gone out into the world and done well. And if you've done well, we want to, we want to celebrate you. And, if you get a chance to see the, the graduates that are up, up there ahead of you, I think that will inspire you as well. So I highly participate everyone to um, um, participate. And if you have trouble with the, with the app, if you have trouble figuring out how to connect, just get a hold of me and I will try to be a kind of a bridge. I don't have the entire schedule at, at my fingertips, but believe me, everything is inside the app. So uh, if you download the app, and you can get started on downloading the app by going to uh, the Full Sail One uh, website, uh, which is the portal that you use to access our materials. Um, anybody have any questions? I know I, I kind of explained that poorly, and I wish I'd done a better job. But uh, 
I, I, I'm very excited about Hall of Fame, and I'm hoping you guys will be too. And I hope you all will check it out. It, it, it's, it's tough to be an online student, but here at Full Sail, if we can connect you to the things that are going on on campus, you don't feel so far away. And that's what we're really making an effort to do in this week. So this is, this is our, our best shot at pulling you in and, and letting you live on campus. Um, and so anybody who's having trouble with it, you know, get a hold of me afterwards and, and we can do, uh, I can try to help you with it or you can call tech support, but, uh, um, there are ways to connect without having the phone app, but that's really the way they're trying to, to, to pull everybody into it. Um, they put a lot of effort into that app and, and that becomes the experience that they're trying to, uh, make at the center. And Alex, Alexis tells me there is an Android app, so all you have to do is go to Full Sail Events, and uh, you know the that's the app that you're downloading. Uh, Full Sail Events is the actual app, and it changes over time because you know we're going to have something after Hall of Fame 11, and rather than make a brand new app, what we do is we use Full Sail Events to warp into the new uh, app. So. We, we kind of have uh, Full Sail Events as a browser that accesses each new activity that comes along. So that's going to be an important uh, thing for you to have on your phone as you go forward. If you have an Android or an iOS phone, uh, you know, you, you'll certainly want to have that app, uh, you know, not just for this week, but for weeks going forward. Um, so getting back to uh, uh, the course, you know, Welcome to Crave presentation. Uh, all right, so most of you uh, got your got your homework done and turned in. I had a few people who were running a little late and asked for some extra time, and I was happy to grant that. So if you're still working on your uh, TED Talks analysis, please try to get that done and in, in, uh, in as soon as possible. Any time you spend this week working on it is time that you're stealing from yourself for working on the new activities this week. Uh, I was able to grade all of the uh, TED Talk uh, submissions that were turned in. Most of them were excellent. A lot of them were really excellent. Some of them were among the best I've ever seen. So we've got some smart folks here in this group, and I'm expecting big things from you guys. So uh, those of you that are uh, still trying to finish it off, get it in as soon as possible. I've reopened the assignment for anybody who hasn't turned it in, and you should be able to submit it uh, up until Wednesday. Uh, so this week's uh, theme is planning a presentation. So we've we've now seen what's available, what's possible. You 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 didn't see all 3,300 of those TED talks, but I'm sure you all saw enough of them to realize that you can do almost anything you want with a, a really good story and a really good presentation. So with a wide uh, perspective. We're not going to create our own presentation. Each of you is going to create one. And I'm going to give you the topic, but it's the kind of topic in which you sort of fill in the parameters yourself. So you're really making your own assignment. I'm going to go into that in, in a bit. But we're going to start planning that this week. So I'm going to give you the topic, and then we're going to talk about what I want to see in the plan. But before uh, I get to... The plan, I want to talk about the discussion board for this week. It's a really fun discussion, and uh, it um, kicks it up a notch from last week. Uh, most decidedly in that your initial post is not some writing. It's going to be a two-minute vocal from you. You're going to tell me a story using your voice. So emotional storytelling is about how do you transfer your passions to other people. What is it that you have as a tool that can communicate what's in your heart? Well, uh, the bottom line is it's our voice. If we want to talk to other people and tell them what's inside us uh, that's a, a feeling, then what we have to do is we have to communicate other people with truth and feeling and depth. So how do you really talk to someone and have them like really believe you, how you know that this is the truth? 
Well, uh, if you go to the intro page for 2.3, the first thing we have you to do is watch another TED Talk. Some of you may watch this TED Talk last week. I don't notice. I didn't notice that anybody turned it in. So this may be new content for everyone. But Julian Treasures, how to speak so that people want to listen, is a really terrific presentation. Julian Treasure is talking to us about how to connect to other people authentically, how to get, how to tell them what you think, so that they believe you, so that they'll realize the truth and honesty in your voice. Most of us find it hard to lie. You know, there are certain great actresses that could, you know, fake anything or whatnot. But most of us, if you are saying something that's not right, then it shows up in your voice because you aren't saying it the way you normally say things. So what Julian Treasure wants to make, make us aware of is this concept called HAIL. H-A-I-L. It stands for honesty, authentic, authenticity, integrity, and love. If you speak from the heart, if you tell someone the truth, they will hear the truth in your voice. That's why none of us like used car salesmen. We can tell they're lying. We know they're lying to us. So, you know, it's not fun to have uh, a salesman upsell you and you, you just know that all of this is hype and he doesn't believe anything he says. But when someone tells you the truth and you know that you're hearing, it, you know, what's really in their heart, you do make a connection. You do have an authentic uh, feeling for what they have to say. And that's how you transfer passion. And so it's important that we use our voice to do that. Um, I know a lot of people have said that they don't want to be uh, talking on their presentations, that they don't like the way they sound, that they don't want to do a voiceover. Well, you all have to do a voiceover. It's, it's part of the assignment. And I want you to do the best voiceover you can. So instead of just... Uh, pouting about it. I want you to jump into it. I want you to, I want you to, to take it on as um, a real challenge that you can not only do it, but you can do it better than you've done it before. We're going to learn how to communicate so that other people can, can tell the passion that we have. And uh, Julian Treasure basically introduces another concept that the way that you the way that you transfer this passion through your voice is just simple vocal techniques vocal toolbox little things that you can do to emphasize now these are not special things and these are not things that I want everybody to to like try to do everything or overdo it or or get melodramatic i want you to just to dip your toe into this vocal toolbox little things that you can do to communicate certain ideas of passion. What are we talking about? Well, if you talk at a normal rate, then that's who you are. But if you talk really fast, then it suddenly sounds like you're very excited. Or if you talk very slowly and in a measured tone, somehow that connotes maybe sadness or thoughtfulness or pensiveness. So speaking faster, speaking louder adds an emotional weight to what you have to say. And you can um, emphasize certain words. You can, uh, the way you ask a question is that you have your voice come up at the end of every sentence. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but that is really how people talk when they ask a question. If, if you wanna know uh, something, then when you're asking that question, at the very end, you're kind of like bringing your voice up almost like uh, Oliver and Oliver Twist holding his hand out with his bowl. Please, you know, tell me what's going on. So uh, you can put pauses and and in your sentences, you can vary the way that you speak. Uh, if you, if you're reading something, you can actually make people feel the commas and the periods in the, in the uh, the phrasings that you do. So you don't want to speak in a, a certain measured tone all the way. Sometimes you want to speak in phrases. So one phrase you might say very fast, and you'll take a breath, you may, you'll finish the rest of the sentence. It helps people to understand what you have to say. 
And there are other tricks like dramatic pauses, things that you can do to make people lean in and listen more to what you have to say. Now, these are all brand new concepts for us, and I want us to dip our toe in. I don't want you to feel like you have to master this. You've got an entire career here at Full Sail to get better and better with every presentation you do. So if you just practice one or two of these techniques or just think about it, um, that'll be enough. That's all I'm really asking for is to take these concepts and see, can I make what I want to do better? So uh, there's a second video here in which we talk about the various vocal techniques and things you can try. And you should just go through that laundry list so that you have it in your head and you can see what you want to do. So um, what is it that we're asking you to do? Well, you have to download the instructions for that. So the instructions are right here. It's the second thing that your second PDF that you download. And that instruction uh, is this document here, emotional storytelling. And the instruction is using the vocal toolbox and concepts of hail, tell your audience a story centered around a piece of media that resonates with you. It can be a song, a movie, a video game, painting, a sculpture, or a book. The options are endless. Connect with your instructor if you need assistance. So I want you to talk about a work of art, a media, a, a piece of media that you encountered that had a profound effect on you. Now, this means something that somebody else did that had an effect on you. I don't want all of you who are brilliant artists to say, oh, I'm inspired by my own music. That's promotion. That's self-promotion. This is something that somebody else made that caused you to just be profoundly moved. And now I want you to tell someone else about it so that they will be interested in that. And we're going to make this we say piece of media, it can be as broad as you want to interpret it. You know, we have a lot of folks coming here to study um, uh, sportscasting. Well, maybe there's a game that you watched that was your all-time favorite game, you know, Michael Jordan basketball game or, you know, game seven of the World Series or something like that that you'll always remember and that provoked an emotional response to you. I want you to tell me a two-minute story Using the techniques from last week's readings and, and, and uh, your choice of the subject, create a two to three minute audio visual project and tell us why it was important to you. All right. So your, your initial post this week is a two minute piece of audio. Now we're calling it an audio visual project because you have a lot of options for the way that you can make this. And one of the easiest ways is to make it as a video. If you have a webcam on your laptop or you have a uh, camera on your uh, smartphone, then the easiest thing you can do is just turn that smart uh, camera on yourself, talk into the camera, and tell your story for two to three minutes. And then it's your option whether you want to be on camera or not. If you don't want people to see your face, you could strip off the audio. If you don't mind or you want to be on camera, then you can post it as a video. So we're, we're happy for you to have video. Video is not required. What is required is that you have your audio, a two to three minute audio um, of you telling the story about this piece of media and what it means to you. Now, we're not interested in, in you being a critic. We're not as interested in you telling me, oh, the guitar work is so perfect. I mean, that may be why you, you love it and you may have to say that, but most of the time, your emotional connection is going to be tied to some event in your life. This is the song that I heard when I fell in love. This is, you know, uh, this is a video game that I played with my dad, and I'll always remember my dad because, you know, every time I get out Zelda, you know, we used to play it when I was young, etc. So it's going to be about a memory. It's going to be about an event. It's going to be about something that involves you. So I want you to tell me what the media is. And I don't want you to fret about, oh, this is my favorite or this is the greatest work of art or anything like that. It just needs to be a good story. It just needs to be something that involves you and that you're telling us what happened or why and, and you're transferring that passion. That's what we're looking for. And, and if you look on page three of the instructions, 
we give you uh, a number of options for the way that you can create this. You can create it as audio only. You can use your phone or your computer to record audio only. You can create it as a, 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 web, a web video or a, 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 you know, a smartphone video. Um, you can use presentation tools like PowerPoint or Keynote uh, uh, to do it. You, you can use something called Adobe Spark. Um, th those of you that have never heard of it, Adobe Spark is a free online tool that allows you to make presentations very quickly. And we highly recommend it because it's very easy to learn, very quick to use. And uh, you may want to use that. Uh, and, and so that could be an experience that you have. Um, but what we want you to do is to post that media into the discussion board. So this week's discussion board, the initial post is not a big, long piece of text. It's an introductory piece of text. And then it's either a video or an audio piece. And I have a couple of examples. I've seeded the, the, uh, the discussion board with some examples and I want to show you. So the first one is an example of a webcam. So when you turn on the webcam, uh, there are a number of options available. If, if it's if your camera, if your if your computer is fixed, then uh, the webcam is stable and, and you can just sort of walk around. Uh, you can you can use your hands uh, for uh, to talk with, and uh, uh, you can have uh, facial expressions and body language. When you turn on the webcam. Everything that shows up in the shot, you're responsible for. So make sure, you know, your mom isn't ironing in the background or, uh, in, you know, the dog isn't, isn't in the shot or something like that. You want to make sure that, that we're just focused in on you and that the shot is, is clean and, and, and uh, you're controlling that space. And I know a lot of you have difficult circumstances. Maybe you have kids, you know, uh, maybe you've got roommates and it, it's hard to control things. There are, way, there are places that you can be where you can have controlled audio. Uh, oddly enough, one of, the, one of the best places to control the audio space is your car. Now, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to record anything while they're driving, but if you're parked and you're sitting in your car and you're the only one in your car, then that audio space inside the car is yours. And that becomes a fairly easy place to make uh, a smartphone video. Now, with a smartphone video, one caveat I have to say is that you have to fix the camera. I have to affix the camera. With a, with a computer, uh, the webcam is on the computer and the computer doesn't move around, so you've got a stable shot. Most people, when they shoot themselves with their smartphone, they start waving their hand around, and that is very annoying. So if you're going to use your smartphone to record video, you want to lock the, the, the phone to something. And sitting in your car, you can, you can brace the phone against the steering wheel and get a pretty good headshot. So that's one thing you can do. Another, another thing you can, uh, where you can control the space often so, sometimes is your bathroom. You can get into the bathroom, close the doors. Sometimes if there's all tile, there's a very echoey sound, it might be nice uh, or uh, so forth. So. Um, different ways to do that. But if you're going to do a webcam, you're talking directly into the camera. And I want to show you this example. Um, uh, James uh, uh, James is doing a webcam. Uh, oh, this is Andrew. Andrew's doing a webcam about the movie Superman. And he's going to tell us why it's his favorite movie and so forth. And he's just standing in front of the computer. And then he created the video and he posted it to YouTube, this is a terrific thing to do. If you host your videos on YouTube, you can then link them back in the discussion board. And when you do that, you have the advantage of the, the uh, familiar uh, YouTube interface to play back with. So let me play you some of uh, um, Andrew Geimer's um, reminis reminiscences about the original Superman. So Superman the movie, uh, that movie was made in, or was released in 1978. I think the first time I actually sat down and watched that movie, uh, I had to have been like five or six years old in that um, area. Now, aside from things like great acting performances and casting, amazing technological leaps and bounds and filmmaking, having basically three separate movies in one single movie, aside from those things that I, that I would generally say are reasons why it's my favorite movie, the reason that I feel such an emotional connection to it, um, goes back to my dad. 
when I was little, when I was that little, uh, my dad was in the Navy and he was away overseas on deployment for long, for a really long periods of time. And so unfortunately it was during those sort of formative years in my life, in my childhood, that my dad wasn't there. He wasn't around. Um, so I was sort of lacking that father figure role model. I guess I sort of found that through this movie, um, and through the character of Clark Kent and Superman. And, uh, now, the, uh, I'll let you watch the entire thing yourself. Uh, the example is in the uh, discussion board, so you can watch it anytime. But I just wanted to give you some sample of it. So um, this is Andrew standing in front of his computer, just talking. He gets to use his hands. He gets to walk back and forth, depending on you know where what your camera setup is or what your your webcam uh, computer setup is. Uh, you can be nearer or closer to the camera. Now, most of you will have noticed that Andrew has some computer skills, and so he also is editing little clips of the movie into his video. I'm happy for you to do that if you have that ability. If you've never done it before, please don't try it. It takes an awful lot of uh, effort. If you know how to do it, feel free to do it. If you've never done it before, all I'm interested in is a webcam. So I'm very happy with just a straight webcam, no cuts. Um, but uh, it's up to you. You can make your your uh, your audiovisual project as elaborate as you like. But this is all I'm asking for. You're standing here. You're telling us uh, from the heart about this media that you chose. Here's an example of an audio-only piece. This is uh, James telling us about a Bruce Springsteen song that uh, he heard. And so this is an audio only piece and I'm going to play it a little bit. Um, let's, uh, let's see how he does. I remember getting to work a little late that day. I don't remember why I was late. Maybe I had an errand to take care of on the way to work or I was just running behind. My office was on the top floor of a six story building. So I took the elevator up and walked off onto a floor, which should have been loud and bustling on a Tuesday morning at nine o'clock. The first thing I noticed though, was that it was eerily quiet and just about everyone was gathered over in the corner, staring up at TV monitors that usually show business news and stock quotes on repeat. I saw one of my friends towards the back of the crowd and I asked him what was going on. I hadn't listened to the radio on the way to work and I hadn't seen the TV that morning at all. He said to me, two planes crashed into the World Trade Center this morning, not looking away from the TV monitor which I just noticed showed two familiar buildings with black smoke pouring out of them. So if you're of a certain age, uh, the, the, the 9 11 bombings are one of those events that you'll always remember where you were when you first heard about it. Uh, a previous generation uh, also always remembers where they were when John F. Kennedy was shot. So, a shocking public event, it just becomes seared into your memory. Now, James is telling us about this event, his experience at 9-11, because years later, he hears a Bruce Springsteen song about firemen fighting in the towers, and he has this powerful notion of deja vu. It, it brings him right back to that moment in time. So he has to set up the story. There are a thousand ways to tell a story. Sometimes you have to set it up, but sometimes you want to go straight into this is my choice of medium and you, you draw out it and you, you talk about the media from the very beginning. So there's no one way to do this. You have to figure out the story and what it is that you want to say. James wants us to recognize what the memory meant to him and then talk about how the experience of the song brought that back. So here's another uh, interesting example, and this one uses Adobe Spark. So you will see kind of what the capabilities of Adobe Spark are. This is a free tool that you can use on the web. We highly recommend those of you that, that want to make presentations of this sort, use this tool. It's much faster to deal with than PowerPoint, and uh, it's um, uh, got a lot more advantages than a lot of other online presentation tools like Prezi or something like that. So Adobe Spark, it's free to use. You do have to sign up and register. But uh, Danielle is going to tell us about her favorite movie. And again, before she can actually get to the movie, she has to tell you a little bit about who she is. So let's take a look at 
Adobe Spark. Now, this is an MPEG-4 movie that we're dropping directly into our discussion board. So unlike the linked video from, from YouTube, this has a different interface. This is something that you can play directly in the discussion board. So here's Danielle telling us about her favorite movie. I think we all can agree that middle school is pretty awkward. It's filled with awkward preteens in their awkward bodies, navigating their awkward social cliques. But despite all of that awkwardness, it's in these fragile middle school years that children really begin to piece together who they are and what they care about. It's in middle school where self-esteem seems to be teetering on a tightrope, waiting for a strong gust of wind to push it to one side or the other. And this issue of self-esteem was no different for me. It was in middle school that I realized that I did not fit in with the other girls in my class. I was all about basketball while they were all about nail polish. I hated skirts, but they were all into skirts. The effort that it takes to put on makeup depresses me, but the time crunch never seemed to bother the other girls in my grade. I knew that the things that my peers were turning to was not authentic to me, but I still felt the pressure to conform. I was a tomboy, and in many ways I still am, and in middle school that can be difficult to grapple with. I didn't fit into the socially constructed definition of a girl. I never got the guy. I never dressed up. I hate wearing heels. But one thing I did know was that I was in love with the game of basketball. It was in the seventh grade when I first saw what would become my all-time favorite movie, Love and Basketball. It was finally a movie for the tomboy. Again, I'll let you watch the entire piece on your own, but you can see that she had to just introduce who she was before she could talk about why the movie was special for her. And that's just to go show that uh, everyone has their own way to tell a story and you're going to figure out yours. I want you to tell me a two to three minute story that involves a piece of media that had an emotional effect on you. And the point of telling the story is to transfer that emotion that you feel to other people. You want to express yourself so that people are feeling the true you. And so as you create these media, uh, you're going to end up linking them in. So you need to introduce what you wrote and then um, in the final tools here, we have a, we have a tool where you can in, uh, upload an MPEG-3 video. So if you create an audio-only file, if it's MPEG-3, it will play in line just like uh, James's audio here you, with the little player works great. If it ends up being a different kind of audio file, uh, M4A audio files are, are very popular on phones. You can attach it. So if, if, you, if it's an audio file that's not an MPEG-3, just use drag and drop and drop it in there and people will be able to click on it and play it in their browser and hear it just as easily. Uh, it just won't have the player built into it. If you create a video, that video has to be in MPEG-4 format. So you can't use an AVI video, you can't use a, a QuickTime MOV video, but if you create an MPEG-4 video and you drop it here, then the um, full sale system will stream that video. There's a 500 megabyte maximum. So, you know, uh, please don't work in uh, 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 1080i or something really high resolution just to get the size up because the picture doesn't have to be that big. Um, but uh, if you make a, a, an MPEG-4 video, you can drop it here. It will upload to the system and it will play back through the system very perfectly. You can also upload images. So if you just want to have an accompanying image to your audio, you can do that, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And you can embed audio or video from other places. So if you record your piece on SoundCloud or you put your video on YouTube, you can use the embed tools on those sites to uh, put it to drop the code in here, and it will play through the automatic players. So there's a list down here of things that you can embed. Adobe Inline, Adobe Spark. Calendly, Discord, GeoGebra, uh, Google Calendar, Google Documents, Google Drive, Go to Training, HP5, iCloud, Canopy, Linda, NPR, SharePoint, Office 365, SlideShare, SoundCloud, Spotify, Swank, TED Talks, Vidler, Vimeo, VoiceThread, YouTube, Zoom. So uh, I'm going to say that uh, for most of us, um, that SoundCloud and, and YouTube are the ones that are going to be matter.
But uh, if it's a bit, if it's possible to embed, you can do that, and you can do that through the setup. Now, if you have a file that you can't get to load, then always just hit it on drop and drag. Uh, if you create something in PowerPoint, PowerPoint won't stream, so you can just you you, you put it on drag, drop and drag. People will be able to download it and watch it from there. And as you upload your files, if you're having any difficulty, just use drop and drag, and I will come in if I can and make it play through the interface. Uh, I also put my own uh, story in. I picked an old movie that I love, a John Wayne movie called The Quiet Man. I'm going to tell you why I love it. So I, it's an audio-only piece, but then I added a, a, a picture, a movie poster, just to give you some context. So this is an example of the picture upload uh, event. So uh, I still want everybody to try, if they can, to uh, get these uploaded by Wednesday. But if it takes a little bit longer, feel free to take extra time to, to get it up. Uh, I, I understand that this is more effort than the initial post that we asked for last week. But it's also a lot more fun. So uh, by Wednesday or Thursday, I want you to try to get that story up so that everybody else can see it and have a chance to look at it. And then there's also the respond uh, 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 aspect of the, of the assignment. Everybody has to respond to two or more classmates. And this is where it gets really fun because you have two different things you can talk about. You can talk to the person about how well they did their vocal uh, um, performance. Yeah, you can talk about how well they used the vocal toolbox and, and those aspects. Or you can talk about them about their choice of media. If someone else chose Final Fantasy VII and that's your favorite gaming too, then you can bond over that. So whatever the whatever the content is that they talk about, you can talk about that or you can talk about their vocal performance. But there should be lots to talk about and the, uh, the, the replies should be a lot of fun this week. You should be able to have a lot of back and forth going on. And again, while the minimum for the grade is that you reply to two people, I'd like to see you replying to two, three, four, five people uh, just to have the discussion be much more lively. Uh, it really is, is going to happen very quickly. And, and as you're watching and reading other people's stuff, you're going to want to reply anyway. So this is a really fun assignment. Uh, I know it's a little bit challenging, but anything that's a technical issue, we're going to help you through. And anybody that's having any problem with it or any questions about it, just get a hold of me and we'll uh, we'll talk you through it. So the other main assignment for the week is planning a presentation. And part of the reading this week in slide up, uh, we're reading stuff from, from the second book as well as some more stuff from Resonate. And in the second book, we start to hear about the production process. And so... This is the week in which we start planning our presentation. We're not going to build it yet, but we're going to start creating, the, uh, generating the ideas for it. We're going to start thinking about what we have to accomplish, and we're going to do all the pre-production effort. And so that's what this week's assignment is about. So if we go uh, to this assignment and you download the instructions, you will see that... Uh, the instructions are about what I want to see in the plan. And there's very little about the assignment itself. The assignment is, is briefly managed here, your plan to pitch yourself to a future employer. So that's not a, a good enough explanation. So let me start this right now. What is the topic? What is the presentation that you're going to be creating for the rest of the month? Well, you are going to presume that whatever you came to full sales to study you graduated, you got through it all, you took those classes, you created all those portfolio materials, you, you did all that work, you gained all those skills, you graduated uh, in the subject that you came here to accomplish. And now on graduation, or possibly a few years later, you might feel like you need a, a, some, some experience at other firms to, uh, to warm up to it, but you're finally ready to go for your dream job. So you have to figure out where it is, where it is that you, you always wanted to work. Are you a video game designer and you've always wanted to work at Blizzard? Are you an animator and you've always wanted to work at Pixar? Are you a programmer and you've always wanted to work at Google? 
what is the dream company that you want to work for? Think about it. I think most of you have some notion of, of where you'd like to end up uh, in in uh, some asp some some fields. It's a little bit harder, you know, uh, if you're a uh, uh, a graphic designer or you're in marketing or you're in audio production. Uh, maybe you don't have a particular company in mind, but uh, this is a chance to do research. So this week we are answering those questions, and the very first question. Identify your target audience. Well, your target audience is the company that you want to hire you. Now, you have to pick one company and you have to focus in on them. You have to do research. You have to learn who you're talking to. You have to know your audience. Remember, that's one of Nancy Duarte's uh, number one proverbs. You have to know who your audience is. So if you're speaking to the heads of creative at Pixar, find out who those people are. Find out what projects they worked on. Find out what you and they have in common so that you can talk to them in a way that bonds. So your job of research this week is to figure out which company you want to work for. And uh, sometimes that's actually going to be some, some research that you have to do. Let's say you're, uh, you, you don't want to move from your small town that you're in, but you're studying audio engineering and you want to get a local job. And maybe you don't know who the uh, audio studios in town are. Well, now is the time to find out. You're going to do that research this week. Because if you want to get a local job doing audio engineering, you've got to find out what your choices are. And once you've, once you've uh, tracked them down, then I want you to find out as much as you can about them so you can make a credible presentation to that person. Now, remember, throughout the entire presentation, this is not the you of today. This is not the you who just started school. This is the you of 40 months from now, of two or three years from now. Someone who's gained all these skills, has performed all these projects. You've gotten the confidence you need. You've gotten the uh, projects under your belt, the experience, and you're gonna talk to them about the skills that you have, the vision you have, why you wanna work with them. You wanna tell these companies, you know, uh, why they're your choice and how you might fit in. Uh, now, you're doing research on these companies, maybe for yourself this week, but when you do the presentation, that research isn't necessarily going to be part of your presentation. It's just part of the preparation that you have to make so that you can talk to them. What are you going to talk to them about? Well, you have to tell them who you are. You're going to tell them what your what your brand is what your skills are, why you're a good fit for their company. So you're telling your own personal story, you're telling the story of your experiences, how you got uh, uh, in, in, uh, involved in your subject matter, what experiences you had along the way, what outside experiences you had. Some of you had diversions. Maybe you had an entire career before you came back to do what you always wanted to do. Maybe you were in the army for a few years and those uh, those were valuable years that gain you, gave you uh, personal discipline and, and, uh, and uh, you know, professional confidence and so forth. You want to talk about the life experiences that you've had. You want to talk about the classes that you took at Full Sail. So if you've never even checked out what your, your curriculum is, uh, that's something you'll need to do this week. You need to know which classes you're going to take. Every one of you, whatever your degree program is, your entire uh curriculum is online so we'll show you how to how to uh, access that from the full sail edu website and i want you to each talk about one or two classes that were the most important classes that you took you're going to talk about them in the past past tense because we're projecting into the future and i want you to show and talk about portfolio work that you haven't created yet uh, if you're a creative writer, talk about a novel that you, you wrote while you were here in school and tell us a little bit of the plot about it. Talk, talk about a video game that you created. You're allowed to make these things up because you're projecting into the future. Uh, and you're, this is what you're going to be doing between now and that time in the future when you have that uh, terrific meeting. Now, this is a three to four minute pitch. It has to be audio. So three to four minutes of audio, you telling us about who you are and what your brand is. 
and then it's accompanied by slides. It's accompanied by visuals. Uh, you can do this on, in video if you like, but for the most part, we're gonna use slide presentation programs. We're gonna give you as wide a choice as you like. Do you wanna use PowerPoint? Well, we have the latest PowerPoint. Uh, a lot of you are gonna have a great experience with Adobe um, Spark this week. And if you like using Adobe Spark this week, then you'll be free to use it uh, next week when you start creating your own presentation. But as we're starting this week, we're planning the presentation that we're gonna build in week three and that we're going to revise in week four based on feedback. That's the plan for the rest of the month. This week we're planning it. We're, we're putting all the elements together. So you have to do a lot of brainstorming about your story flow. Note in the instructions here, we wanna know the beginning, middle, and end of your story. What are the elements that you're gonna talk about about yourself that you're gonna put into your story? These are the things that happened. These are the skills that I have. These are the ideas for projects, for games, for, for uh, music pro uh, productions that I have. So depending on what you wanna do, you need to be able to plug uh, information that, about yourself into this plan so that I know that you've got ideas for script waiting. As soon as you finish your plan, you can move on to probably writing the script. You really need to write a three to four minute script. Now you're not turning that in for grade, you just simply, it's something you need to do in order to have a very good voiceover. Most people, when they try to wing it, they end up talking way too long or not saying exactly what they want. So writing a script is a way of controlling what you have to say. And we've discovered that uh, about one page double spaced equals a minute spoken out loud. So when we say you, we want you to make a three to four minute presentation, you should know that that's a three to four minute, uh, three to four pages double spaced of uh, text. And that's the script that we want you to create. And you can't create that script unless you've got the elements of your life. And that's what this, brainstorming is about. That's what the beginning, middle, and end elements are. We want you to tell me what are the things that you're going to have to say. I want you to, to start in the beginning to tell us how you got interested in your passion. Why did you start with music? Why did you get interested in video games? What made, what turned you into someone who wanted to be a filmmaker or um, a computer programmer? You know, What are those influences? And who are your heroes? And what is your vision? What are the, what are the elements you want to do? What ideas you have for projects? These are all things that you're going to take to your employer. And at the end, I want everybody at the end of their presentation to, to call that dream employer out by name and say, I love what you do. I admire your work. I, I, I've studied and gained all these skills. I can be a valuable asset to your team. I want to join your team. Making that ask is the most important part. That is the culmination of your presentation. So nobody's making the presentation this week. What you're doing is you're filling out this plan. This plan is text. This is just notes. I'm going to give you examples of what other students have done. So like last week with the uh, the TED Talk, if you're, if you're curious about the format, uh, it varies. You can do uh, a lot of different things, but I will show you examples of what other students have done. And then star moments. Uh, remember, star moment is something they'll always remember. What are some things that you might put into your presentation that will really connect with your um, uh, the audience that you're trying to get? If you're a, a music composer, maybe you're gonna have a piece of, of sound that you wanna show them. Or if, if you're uh, a game designer, maybe you have some, some stills from a, a video game that, that you did in college. You know, th These are portfolio elements. And remember, you get to make all this up because we're projecting into the future. So, this is the plan that I want. Uh, and talking about examples, uh, here's a person who wants to work at Netflix. So in paragraph form, he's written up who his target audience is, what his true message is. I mean, what is the brand? What is he, What are the skills that he's trying to put forward are? Talking about his future self, talking about the beginning, middle, and end of his story. So we have all the elements of uh, that are going to go into the finished script here. Uh, so you can write them up in essay form if you like. Most people are going to want to just have little um, 
stream of consciousness uh, notes. So that's best done in outline form. You give me target market, target audience, big idea, beginning, middle, and end. And within it are just isolated points that might come together. Um, that shows your brainstorming. It shows your ideas. Because you're not editing and creating the script just yet. You're just putting in everything that you might talk about. And you might put in more stuff than you actually use. Uh, here's a person who wants to be a creative director for Disney. So she decided to make the... Uh, submission that she turned in an example of some of her work. So again, uh, portfolio work is what's going to sell you. So if that's the way you want to work, uh, you, you're going to sell by example. Um, some people don't like to use text. So there's mind mapping tools that f for people who are more visual than, than textual. Now, really, this is exactly the same as, a, as an outline in Microsoft Word. Uh, this is a person who wants to be a concept artist for Blizzard. And he's telling me all these different facts about Blizzard. He's telling me these facts about his brand and his true message. Here's the beginning, middle, and end of his story. These are things about his star moment. This is stuff about his future self. So it's all isolated elements, and they're all organized by topic, just like the outline, but in a, in a visual form, if you're a visual person, this might make you feel better. So there are mind mapping tools. If you're interested in using these, you feel like they might make you more creative, uh, we'll show you what those are and how you can use those. But anything that you want to use that makes you creative, that makes you feel like you can get your ideas out are permissive. Here's the person who did everything on post-it notes and put them on the wall. And then he took a photograph of it and this is his submission. And this is fine because, and this is important, I could read everything. If you're going to give me notes from your handbook, uh, from your from your uh, journal, or you're going to do something by hand, make sure that I can read your writing. If you don't think I can read your writing, then absolutely I can't. I need you to type it up. But if your writing is very clean and I can read it, then I have everything I need here. He's telling me this beginning, middle, and end of his journey. He's telling me about his, his uh, delivery audience. He's talk, telling me about his star moments. So he's got all of these elements here, and writing it on Post-it notes was his way of brainstorming, of being creative. So I want you to use the element that makes sense for you. If you want to write in paragraph form, you can. If you want to write in outline form, you can. If you want to just have notes from a notebook, you can turn those notes in as long as they equal the elements I'm looking for, and that is... Tell me your target audience. Tell me what is your big idea or your brand. What are the flow of ideas? What is your star moment? What is the beginning, middle, and end? These are the elements that I want you to give me ideas, story ideas for. And so everybody needs to figure out who they want to work for, and everything flows from there. Do we have questions? Everybody hearing me? Uh, when is this due? This is due next Sunday. So you have all week to get this done. I don't want anybody to get it done early because I want you to spend this time thinking about it. If you do get it done early uh, and you're convinced that you're you're you've got it right, get a hold of me. If I approve it, you can go. You can move straight on and start writing the script. But I don't want you writing a script until you put all these brainstorming elements together. You have all week to think about who do you want to work for, what is this project you want to be, what are, you know, what is the story of yourself and the skills that you've gained all about. And remember, you're projecting into the future. Uh, thanks, Helen. Anybody else? All right. Well, uh, I think this is going to be a really creative week. And I almost hate that Hall of Fame is happening in this week for you because, you know, um, I want you to spend as much time with Hall of Fame as you can. But between the um, emotional storytelling and figuring out, you know, who your dream audience is and what your project's going to be, you're going to be uh, basically uh, using up all your time.
Helen writes, so if we have done the things we've done for the classes that we're taking, can we use those images? Absolutely. You can use your own images as much as you like. But what I'm giving you permission to is go to the internet and, and, and take other people's images and pretend that you're, you're yours. As long as you credit them in the piece saying, this is something I got from X, XYZ, you can pretend that other stuff that you haven't created yet is yours because we're projecting into the future. I can't expect you to have written the script you haven't written yet, but you can talk about the script. You can have ideas for it and you can uh, have those kinds of things. So, but anything that's your own, and certainly a lot of you have been on, on your journey towards your dream job for way longer than this month. You know, it didn't just start with full sale. You've, you've had a lot of other experience. So all that experience counts. Maybe you went on tour uh, with a band before you ever started to, to you know, study music production at Full Sail. Well, that's certainly a very important life experience. So anything that you did in your life that is preparing you to become the person you're going to be is relevant to be putting in this presentation. More questions? Well, I'm sure the questions will come to you, uh, but I think we've we've set everybody up. Uh, there's lots to do this week, so you know the the thing to do now is just to make a plan for how to give each of it enough time and get it all done in the proper hero at proper time. You know, you may get excited about this this uh, uh, figuring out the plan, but remember, it's not due until Sunday. So you want to try to get your emotional story done first so that once that's out of the way, you can spend all of your time thinking about your project. And the more time you think about it, you know, the, the thinking uh, doesn't go away. You won't lose those ideas. If you, if, you, if you mull it over for several days, by the time you start writing them down on paper, you will remember uh, most of the stuff that's been going through your head. So I'll be available all week if you have any questions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post uh this session and that'll be the first thing that's posted in um 2.1 but i'm also going to post the previous month because i lectured on the production system uh in as as a as you're doing as you perceive in the reading and that has some useful stuff in it so um i'm going to give you this uh, today's session and I'm going to give you last month's session. And you don't have to watch the sec last month's section, but if you find it uh, useful, uh, I want you to be able to have access to it as well. So we'll, we'll post all of that stuff for you guys to have. And uh, remember, the first thing I want you to do is go get the, uh, the Hall of Fame app, you know, events, and uh, see if there's something up there that's, that, that's happening this week that you really want to participate in, because I think you'll find that the highlight of the week. Good night, everybody, and I want you to have a great week. This should be a really fun, really creative week. And, and uh, you know, anytime you're having any technical problems, just get a hold of me because we want to just get through those as quickly as possible. Good night.